of the discourse. We've taken an abandoned concrete factory at the margins of the declining American empire and repurposed it into a battleground where 19 separate entities from across the political spectrum enter the discourse one by one and do battle to determine who controls the narrative force of the discourse. I hope you'll join me, your Southern Gothic futurist host, Dirt God Raven Mac, for each and every episode of Monday Night Rumble of the Discourse. Hey, what is going on, folks? This is your boy, Dirt God Raven Mac, back here at our abandoned concrete factory at the edge of town. Monday Night Rumble of the Discourse Spring 2023 series getting started, baby. Another seven weeks of hot, exciting, painfully excruciating political discourse in the squared circle. Tonight's sponsor could be you, but it's not. Share your message here. Support Monday Night Rumble of the Discourse. Um, help me navigate having to do this. Uh, we have six more weeks after this week. Uh, it doesn't take much to sponsor, and I really don't care what your message is. You can sponsor it for a good Venmo donation and sponsor it to Raven as a stupid asshole. I don't care. Um, so... You can get up here for next week. Again, how this works, Monday Night Rumble at a Discourse, 27 competitors from across the political spectrum, both real and unreal, two begin at the opening bell. One comes out every minute thereafter. You get eliminated by being tossed over the top rope, pinned, or submitted, and we go until only one person is left. Competitors get a point for eliminating somebody they also get bonus points if they're part of that final four uh you can see that right there and they do so to accumulate points because our first six weeks tonight is the first week uh we'll have six weeks of open competitions where the people are trying to accumulate points where the top 27 point getters over the first six weeks will come out that final week in reverse order so the more points you have the better off you are at coming out late and being crowned the champion of the discourse for our spring 2023 three season and in fact let's recap our previous season winners uh winner 2023 uh this past season the police state won that one <coughs> excuse me police state of course won that one in the finale um fall 2022 the verified blue check uh that's that legacy blue check that was our winner so let's go on up to the ring now and see what we're gonna have happening tonight and our referees in the ring as you can see are vice president kamala harris and the lady cop our first competitor coming out New York Congresswoman AOC, of course, member of the squad, a progressive voice. Um, supposed to be part of progressive change. Came about in 2020, elected the same time Donald Trump was elected. Of course, you know, now that you're in your third term, how, how, how much, I'm sorry, 2016, um, now in her fourth term, how, how much change comes out? Um, after that, um, I don't know, man. I think the longer these people are in office, the less likely they are to make any substantial change. Uh, you know, I'm a firm believer in term limits, but I'm also a firm believer in government limits. Like, you know, you should have term limits to individuals, but perhaps the government should be redone every generation or two as well. And she'll be taking on Governor Ron DeSantis, of course looking to be a candidate for president uh hadn't officially announced but seems like he's going to be going up against trump of course getting trump's ire from that and wearing those lucky muck boots from the hurricane down there still um governor DeSantis done some pretty dark things definitely exercising the full power of the executive branch very um you know borderline authoritarian so you'll we'll see if a quick pin but a kick out there I think that's the problem in the post-Trump era is we're going to start having more and more um, efficient authoritarians, people who can actually be that authoritarian without the ego that Trump has. And speaking of which, here comes Texas Governor Greg Abbott in the news this past weekend. This guy down there who purposefully went to a Black Lives Matter protest and killed a protester, went right in the middle of it, said he felt threatened and shot and killed somebody, um, got convicted by a jury who said that by all intents and purposes this man went there to commit that act and Greg Abbott is sort of streamlining the process of pardoning this guy um, who just convicted had not been in jail as far as I know uh, I mean of course at the bail system he might have been in jail the whole time awaiting trial but Greg Abbott flexing that authoritarian muscle as well so it's aoc ron DeSantis, and greg Abbott going at it 
And speaking of flexing authoritative muscle, this is this is the abortion judge, Matt Keck Smart, Smirk Smart. I don't know how to say his name, but he is the abortion judge. This is the Texas judge who ruled that the FDA's approval of the abortion pill is uh, overruled, and I'm not really sure how he has the authority to do that and the funny thing is the people who brought up the case are not even they weren't even affected by the drug it's not like they took the drug and suffered any repercussions it has nothing to do with them um but they brought it up trump appointed this guy back during his presidency and he was a he's a anti-abortion judge and the whole point is to play lawyer ball as hank hill would say and coming out now the mom blogger um you know Mom blogger been I know the mom blogger and it's been sad to watch her the last few years. She's been gradually falling down rabbit holes to the right. I know it started with the vaccine passports. And now, you know, and it's interesting coming in after the abortion judge. You would expect a, a, a self-proclaimed feminist to be concerned with the abortion rights issues, but the mom blogger seems to be more concerned with transgender issues, which is just really confusing to me. The abortion issue is a much huger issue than the transgender issue, but uh, people are falling in the wrong rabbit holes, man. They're they're getting distracted from the point. And speaking of the transgender issue, here comes the man who is manufacturing this issue more than anybody. Matt Walsh, just straight up hoping for genocide on people. And this guy is just a disgusting human being, and I'm actually disappointed he's in here, Bob. Can it, do I have any veto power? I have no veto power on characters in this game. Okay, well, well, I don't know if you noticed when we came out, we do have a purple apron on the ring now. So I did, I did get to have that input. I, I worked with my girlfriend to get a purple apron for the ring, and there's a pin. The abortion judge has just pinned Ron DeSantis. So Ron DeSantis is our first man eliminated without a point here, and Greg Abbott eliminated as well on top of that ladder. And the mom blogger sort of fell under that ladder, and I'm not sure if Greg Abbott got shook off or just fell off. He but he's eliminated. And here comes Elon Musk. And look, Elon Musk falls over a briefcase there ringside. What an idiot, man. This guy is such a joke. And, and Kamala Harris had a three count on, on Matt Walsh on the mom blogger, but then staggers off. Well, Elon tripped over something coming into the ring. Very Elon appropriate behavior there. This idiot has halved his wealth. He's no longer the wealthiest man on earth because of a combination of Twitter's devaluation and also Tesla's dropped in a lot of value too. To the point though, I see a Tesla, I think the person's an asshole like this. And AOC knocked over the top of by Matt Walsh, so he has eliminated two folks already. And we get a buzzer and it is that Fall 2022 champion of the discourse, the Legacy Blue Check. Of course, you're going to expect him going after Elon because those Legacy Blue Checks are being phased out, I think. Um, I don't know if you there's a plug-in you can use on, on Apple phones, Checkmate. And it's really fun because it when you're on Twitter, you can share it with Checkmate. And it tells you whether they paid for it or, they ver or didn't pay for it. And even if they're verified, now that Elon has blurred the waters, it'll tell you if they were a verified Blue Check and still paid for it. So I am firmly on team block all Twitter blue subscribers. Um, I have a couple of friends who I have not blocked, but I'm very disappointed in them for the subscribing. I have a feeling if I have too many more folks like that, I'll probably just quit Twitter. And here comes Matt Taibbi holding that one. Hunter S. Thompson won't be of the year trophy, which he throws down in disgust. Of course, he was upset last week because Elon and Twitter started blocking Substack links, and that is Matt Taibbi's hustle now that he's not employed as a gameful journalist anywhere. Um, he has that Substack where he hustles folks into paying him directly, and his his billionaire grifter, grift job person, Elon, was hurting his side grift, so... You know, that's how it goes, man. We're all trying to get our grifts going the right way. <coughs> Seems like a good time to remind you of my Southern Gothic Futurist Patreon. That is my grift. Feel free to support that. That helps support this. And we get a buzzer, and coming out is the Tech Lord. The Tech Lord. And Elon would have you believe he is not the Tech Lord, but he is very much the Tech Lord. And here is the Tech Lord who is separate from that. And Elon with a roll-up on the mom blog or only a two-count. Matt Walsh off the top of that and the tech lord just slammed the mom blogger on that ladder and he gets a pin so the mom blogger is eliminated tech lord getting the first elimination 
There's a shadow ban for the mom blog right now. Oh, the face first on Matt Walsh. That's another shadow ban. Matt Walsh is out of here. Yep, that's three. He's out. So the tech lord is just tech lord is silencing his opposition pretty quickly here. We get a buzzer, and it's Dr. Jill Biden, the president's wife, the first lady, of course, in the news because of that women's final four of Iowa against LSU and, and making comments about how the Iowa team would be invited to because there's a whole issue of the Caitlin Clark, Iowa, and Angel Reese from LSU doing the same exact gesture, but because one was a white girl from Iowa and the other one was a black girl from LSU or from Baltimore plays at LSU. Yeah, our inner racism came out once again in America. And Jill Biden wanted to invite the losers to the White House, breaking a, a long-time precedent of inviting sports teams to the White House. And she caught some flat for it. And here comes the bootlicker. I actually had a little incident with the bootlicker recently in the Food Lion parking lot not far from where I live, where I go shopping. He gets had his old F-150 there and a fuck button flag. And I, I laughed at him as I walked past. And he was like, what, do I offend you? And I was like, no, you don't offend me. It's just idiotic. And he proceeded to get in my face like, oh, you're a Biden guy. And I was like, no, I, I hate fucking Joe Biden. I just think you're an idiot for having a flag flying in public that says fuck Biden. Like, that would be embarrassing enough at your house. But to actually drive around in public with that, like, people are just... <laughs> People have gotten bad, man. They have no sense. Hey, speaking of no sense, here comes Marjorie Taylor Greene, that Georgia congresswoman. <coughs> of course, she's been on Trump's side hardcore, went to New York City. I don't know if Georgia, many people from that part of Georgia would even go to New York City, but she did to support Trump. Really positioning herself, I would say, as a likely vice president candidate for Trump. Man, what a train wreck of a ticket that would be and yet still could win. What a disgusting state of affairs. So it looks like we have about eight people in there if I'm counting correctly. Um, I think I'll wait for our next person before I reset the field. Yeah, sorry Bob, I didn't want to do that. My producer Bob Dabalina in my ear telling me I should just go ahead and reset it. But I'm gonna wait, Bob. And here comes New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Of course, he told Marjorie Taylor Greene that she should not be there. So we got the abortion judges in there, Elon Musk, that legacy blue check, Matt Taibbi, the tech lord, Dr. Jill Biden, the bootlicker, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and New York City Mayor Eric Adams. So we got a full crowded field in there. I guess that's nine folks right now. Of course, there's a ladder in the ring. There are seven ladders in and outside the ring. Um, those are meritocracy ladders, symbolizing the American mythology of meritocracy. Tech Lord just slams Jill Biden pretty hard there. We get a buzzer. And joining the mess here is the first time Tennessee State politician Justin Jones, Nashville politician that was just straight up expelled this past week like they they there's a submission Matt Taibbi submitted over there I did not see who had him I think that was the legacy blue check that got him but he is out so Justin Jones the Tennessee Senate or Tennessee Senate just straight up kicked out a couple members um just kicked them out they no longer part of the government um so Justin Jones is the one that was protesting trying to get the tech lord gets him Tech Lord Marjorie Taylor Greene looked like Tech Lord was pinned by Justin Jones. Marjorie Taylor Greene pinned by well, and Dr. Jill Biden pinned too. So let's uh, we got a lot going on, folks. Justin Jones kicked out of the Texas Senate, um, trying to get back in now. I think Nashville is going to make it, uh, going to proclaim him going back. Um, but the Republicans at the local level are escalating things where they're just kicking folks out now. We are entering a new stage of democracy where it is democracy and title only and not very democratic. And Justin Jones is pinned there by Matt Gaetz, so he had a good first showing. He got a pin there on the tech lord, but he is gone. He has been expelled from our Monday Night Rumble of Discourse as well. We get a buzzer. And this is one of my favorites, the woke mobsters looking to cancel everybody. And Elon Musk pinned by the Legacy Blue Check. So I know that Legacy Blue Check pinning both 
making time. He be submitting Penny Elon Musk Legacy Blue Check, getting a little uh, comeuppance, but then Legacy Blue Check pinned by the bootlicker. That's the nature of the discourse. You don't, you don't watch your back. You're going to get taken out by somebody. And anyways, that woke mobster, of course, was runner-up last season in our finale, the last person eliminated by the police state. So we've got that abortion judge, Matt, whatever the hell his name is, the bootlicker, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, Matt Getz, and the woke mobster. Those are the five in the ring right now. And we get a buzzer. And it's the free thinker. The woke mobster out there tossed by Matt Getz, I believe it was. So the woke mobster is eliminated pretty quickly, sadly. Free thinker going after them out there, but... Freethinker, of course, if you weren't with us last season, we had a whole army of Freethinker. I think there were six or seven of them, all called the Freethinker, all dressed somewhat identically, all behaving somewhat identically, but they all considered themselves Freethinkers. So I'm hoping we do not have a scourge of Freethinkers, because the scourge of Freethinkers is quite, quite a lot of the sameness, usually, unfortunately. and coming out now not an FBI agent so Eric Adams got tossed out there by somebody I did not see that I was looking at not an FBI agent come out but not an FBI agent if you are involved in any sort of activism or protest always beware there's people who are not FBI agents who are telling you they're not FBI agents and are trying to talk you into things that old bit that if you ask somebody if they're a cop and they have to tell you that is not true Especially not true for FBI agents who use deception as their main tool. And there's a pin on the abortion doctor by the free thinker. He did not get it. And we got a buzzer. And it's John Fetterman, a senator from Pennsylvania, freshly out the hospital, had been suffering some exhaustion and other issues. And I gotta admit, this poor guy, man, he, uh, <coughs> you know, he was a popular local politician, got moved to the state of Pennsylvania, runs for Senate, and oh man, he just speared the free thinker and eliminates that free thinker quickly. Fetterman had a stroke, exhaustion issues, people are saying he's a clone, like it's, <laughs> poor guy just <laughs> trying to enjoy his life at one point, now he's been thrown into politics. That's why politics is so bad, people who know better don't do it. And there goes the not an FBI agent knocked out by John Fetterman, and out comes the Twitter communist, another one of my favorites. Matt Getz got tossed over there. I don't see, I don't know who pinned him, but he got pinned as well. We'll have to check the replay, make sure we give the correct scoring. Twitter communist is out, so we've only got four folks in the ring right now. We got that abortion judge, the bootlicker, John Fetterman, and now that Twitter communist comes in. And Fetterman going for a pin on the abortion doctor. Does not get it. Twitter communist, of course, a stand-up comic as well. Not very funny, but you know, share some of the same politics, but I don't don't share the same methods. You know, whatever, man. So we got a cluster of folks in the aisle, and here comes Alvin Bragg, that New York City DA, but he is caught up there with the free thinker, the not FBI agent, and Matt Getz, and it looks like they're having words in the aisle. Alvin Bragg, the New York City DA who brought charges onto Donald Trump. And they're, they're not letting him pass. They, they're blocking DA Bragg. So <clears throat> we've got our four folks in the ring, and DA Alvin Bragg is dealing with the not an FBI agent over there. Free thinker kind of parading around amongst the crowd, moving ladders around. I don't know if they're going to let this guy in the ring. We're almost getting to where the next person is going to come out. This is unprecedented. Usually they're in there by the end. And now I see Matt Getz gets knocked down. And, and here comes Donald Trump. Speak of the devil. So Alvin Bragg is over there in the aisle. And here comes Donald Trump. And they are all going at it. You can't see it. It's just off camera here. But they are scrapping there in the aisle. Now the FBI agent and Alvin Bragg are going. And Trump nails the FBI agent. And now he is on Alvin Bragg. There is no love lost between them. They are out there fighting Trump. Stomping on Alvin Bragg. And going straight at him man middle fingers for the DA and Trump off the rail onto the FBI agent and Bragg now going after Trump this is crazy man they haven't even made it to the ring and there's a face buster on Trump and 
Brad is going for a pin outside the ring. Just a two count. Here comes Clarence Thomas, also in the news. Clarence Thomas, a lot of, a lot of free vacations and trips, hanging out with billionaire. And him and Alvin Bragg are going at it, having a little variations on the legacy of Thurgood Marshall going on over there. Trump. So our last three competitors have yet to even make it in the ring. Trump finally climbs in. Bragg and Thomas are still out there having some judicial review. Bragg and Thomas up on that, and Thomas gets knocked off, but he did not get in the ring, so he's not eliminated yet. That abortion judge is there on the apron, but he gets in, so finally Thomas gets in. So Thomas is used for receiving a lot of expensive gifts, a lot of expensive uh, from this man right here. Wow. Did not expect Harlan Crow, but here he is, Harlan Crow, and he's holding that trophy from the Olympics held in Germany um, during the Nazi regime. Uh, of course, a collector of Nazi memorabilia as a student of history, as he says, but uh, you know, I don't know if you really, and Kamala Harris has some words for Donald Trump here. Not happy with Donald Trump putting his hands on her. Um, but Harlan Crow's Nazi memorabilia, like I don't know, like I've known a high school I knew a dude who um, had Nazi memorabilia um, that I used to get high with, and he is now a powerful lobbyist in D.C. actually, an environmental lobbyist, but not like an actual environmental lobbyist, he's one of those right-wing quote-unquote environmental lobbyists who just tries to get around environmental regulations. And here he comes, President Biden. Big man himself got the shoes off, ready to go. Um, I gotta admit, I am I am definitely more leftist than rightist. Uh, definitely not right wing at all. But man, President Biden's about an embarrassing joke every time you see him speak. That is not the most eloquent man. And there is a pin. The abortion judge finally eliminated by the Twitter communists. Thank goodness. I was afraid that guy was going to end up winning. I was hoping he was going to be a one and done here in the. In the old, um, Monday Night Rumble at a discourse, especially because I don't know how to pronounce his last name and I don't feel like looking it up. So we are going to get another competitor here, and this is our last one, and this is our last season win of the police state coming out last. So to reset the field, we got the bootlicker, Senator John Fetterman, Twitter communist, New York City DA Alvin Bragg, and former President Trump, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, billionaire weirdo Harlan Crow, President Biden, and the police state. Clarence Thomas, Donald Trump going after Harlan Crow right now. I guess there's some disagreements there. Police state twisting Alvin Bragg's ankle and has him quit. So Alvin Bragg gives it up and is gone. So we are down to down to eight now. So we got eight folks. Of course, the final four will get bonus points. Twitter comments have been busted open over there in the corner. A pair of ladders stacked on top of each other. State is twisting. I believe that's. Can't see everybody. I think he's got Clarence Thomas right now. President Biden and Trump standing there, not locking up. Would have expected them to just be at each other's throats. Of course, Biden may not be looking for the fight. Trump, tactical man, he's going to pick his shots as always. Fetterman, the big guy in there, just drops Biden on his head. Clarence Thomas just flips Biden over. Trump and Fetterman going at it. And now Clarence Thomas and Crow. And there's a knockdown on Crow. Crow is, Crow's not even trying to kick out. Clarence Thomas gets the pin on Harlan Crow. And that, that felt performative, to be honest. I think that was just giving, giving Clarence one more gift. Although Clarence is going at him a little bit. Harlan Crow moves one of his meritocracy ladders out. Perhaps gonna all he takes it with, he's gonna add it to his collection, perhaps. Maybe he's a student of getting his ass kicked too. Trump kicks out on a Fetterman pin and Fetterman goes over the top rope and out so eliminated by a Trump kick out on a pin. So we are down to six. We've got the bootlicker, the Twitter communist. Well no we don't. The bootlicker just gave it up to Trump, so the bootlicker is gone. 
So we've got the Twitter communist, Donald Trump, Clarence Thomas, President Biden, and the police state. That's our final five. <coughs> Next man eliminated, and we'll know who gets the bonus points. So this is week one. We will have six weeks of these type of melees. And then week seven, we will have all our top point getters come back. The communists getting roughed up over there. And there's a quick pin on Trump by the, only a two count. So you got some issues with the lady cop and Kamala Harris being the refs. And there goes a pin. Clarence Thomas pinned by the Twitter communist. Police state got the move on Thomas, but Twitter communist gets the point. So you got an issue with the lady cop and Kamala Harris being the refs here because Kamala Harris obviously pals with President Biden. Lady cop obviously pals with the police state. We'll see how that plays out and counts. Two count on Twitter communist by Biden. Biden just dropped by the police state and he goes for a pin and Kamala with a really slow count, so it definitely came in. Lady Cop got some words from Kamala right there. Biden just nails the police state with that broom. And then nails the Twitter communists with the broom. Police state and Trump going at it. As you can see, eventually, you know how the police state reacts. Will the police state be loyal to Biden or Trump as things get worse? And we already saw that in some places. 2020, there were a lot of local militias organized here in the state of Virginia where I'm at. Twitter communists looking worse for wear, man. Busted open, can hardly stand. Biden's right on him. And Trump over the top rope by the police state, and he goes out. And Biden pins the Twitter communists at the same time. So Trump is out fourth, just barely. So three points, matter of seconds, gives the Twitter communists that extra two points on bonus points. So our final two, also the final two that came out, 29th and 30th, that entered the ring. Biden and Trump, no, Biden and Trump, Biden in the police state. The police state with a backhand on Biden. The commander-in-chief of the executive branch getting no love here. Kick to the face, the punch, and he's over the top rope. Yeah, Biden holds on. The old guy is tougher than he looks. Nailed with that plank. Leg drop to the back. Police state is just roughhousing this dude. Into the ropes. Hits the ladder. Has Biden gotten a shot in yet? And he falls and he's getting stomped by the police. And he gets a kick and he gets nailed with that trophy. This is kind of brutal, folks. Police state just whooping up on Biden. And there's a... Oh, man, that was devastating there. Just pin the guy. Just get this over with. I don't think Biden's coming back from this one, folks. I think we can count on the police state repeating their winning ways. Police state seems intent on inflicting punishment on Biden. Not unlike the police state. They love to hurt people. Holds him up to suplex so that blood rushes to the head, drops him on his back, and goes for the pin. Enforcing Kamala Harris with the slow count. That was a really slow count there by Kamala Harris helping her man out. I think this one's going to be a man onto the ladder. Biden just crushed. And who's going to get there for the count first? Lady Cop gets there first. So it is a quick count, and it is over. The police state wins. Gets up on that top rope, gloating over the commander in chief, President Biden, who is uh, defeated and loses in this first week. Let's look at this replay. You can see Biden sent across the ring, slammed into that ladder, drops in the corner, police state covers him for the one, two, three, and there you have it. That is your winner for our first week, the police state. And let's look at the results from tonight. You can see the police state with 13 points is at the top of that leaderboard. President Biden in second with eight. Twitter communist with seven points. Donald Trump with four. John Fetterman eliminated three folks. So he's on that leaderboard with three. And then we had a whole batch of folks that eliminated two folks that have two points each. Some of these folks will be back next week. Some of them won't. Who knows what the discourse will bring us in the next seven days. I will be here at this abandoned concrete factory to next Monday night and for the next six weeks, unfortunately, to continue 
this Monday night rumble of the discourse. As always, folks, this is supported by my Southern Gothic Futurist Patreon. Patreon is a system where you just like Substack is more of you familiar with that now, but Patreon's older. You just subscribe to it, you pay a monthly fee, you support everything I do, and there's a lot that I do, a lot of different things that your boy Dirk God Raven Mac does, and this just helps subsidize it all. You are subsidizing my, my multimedia chaos, baby. So uh, that's what happens. Um, that's the end of this Monday Night Rumble of the Discourse, week one of our spring 2023 series. Make sure you get some time outside away from your little electronic hand devices that pump the discourse algorithmically into your mind and cleanse yourself. And until next week, salam.